Hello, and welcome to another Fantasy Premier League video. My name is Steve, and I got hit with an unexpected Ezak injury, which had him ruled out for game week 17 last week, which meant that he didn't even make the starting lineup or the bench, which we didn't hear anything about before the deadline. And then I lost both Senesi and Kabore in the abandoned Bournemouth vs Luton match, meaning I only managed to get nine men out onto the pitch in game week 17. And of course, got struck with a pretty hefty red arrow. Um, once the When the points were in, I was sitting around 138k, and now with decent reversal of the Senesi and Kabore points, and of course, no one coming off my bench. I've now dropped down to 163k overall. It has been a little bit of a tumble. Things just have not been going my way the last few weeks. However, I am looking at one week punts for game week 18 as it's the final game week before pulling my wild card uh, next week in game week 19. Uh, we'll also take a quick look at captaincy. Um, obviously who my one week punt or punts may be uh, and some updates to the fixture ticker that I've been working on that will help us navigate the upcoming AFCON and Asia Cup tournaments. Now of course my Game Week 19 wildcard will be uh, getting turned on I suppose I'm pushing the button anyway as soon as the deadline ticks over tomorrow morning the wild card is very close to being ready too not quite ready uh, for the video yet as there's still a few final spots to nail down uh, but my first video next week will in fact be dedicated to the game week 19 wild card so if you want to be notified about that and you're not already a subscriber to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to be notified about the upcoming wildcard draft video and a whole bunch of content across the Christmas period. And if you do enjoy the following content, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Right, so the team without any transfers at the moment, I've got one free transfer to spend and 6.3 million in the bank having sold what uh, Harland for Watkins last week so I am absolutely flush with cash uh, so we've got Turner starting in net at home to Bournemouth who actually had a horrible game uh, last week so I am, am a little bit concerned that he may not make uh, the game this weekend and Johnston on the bench is currently red flagged um, he is not expected back until the 27th of December. So if Turner is re-dropped uh, tomorrow or this, this game week, I will actually be down to 10 men yet again. This wild card cannot come soon enough. Uh, across the back line, I've got Trippier and Lascelles, both at, away to Luton. Uh, my new man that I bought in last week for a two-week play was, of course, Senesi, who had the fixture at, at home to Luton last week. And, of course, his points were reversed this morning. He's away to Nottingham Forest this weekend. So, fingers crossed for a clean sheet, maybe some bonus points or even some sort of attacking return. In that Bournemouth vs Luton match last week though, Senesi was putting some dangerous balls through into the box from quite deep. He did actually manage to set up strikers on a couple of occasions and so he's definitely got the chance to return some attacking points. Uh, across the middle of the park we've got Saka with a tough game away to Liverpool. Uh, Huang Hee Chan, who I am ruining my decision to bring in as I will go into he chan in a little bit as he is potentially an option for Gordon replacement so I will discuss in this video a little later there's a lot of injuries in the Newcastle squad at the moment and so most of actually all I will be going through will be the injuries to the Newcastle team how they are likely to shape up and potential replacements for their key assets 
Uh, but he is at home to Chelsea this week, and I do not hold out too much hope for Huang unless he maybe picks up a lucky penalty. Uh, we've got last week's hero of Cole Palmer in the middle of the park, away to Wolves. He has just been... I'm so glad I got him in early on at a cheap... I think I got him in about 5 million, maybe even 5.1 million. Got him in real, real quick, and he's just been returning points week on week since we pulled him into the squad. Uh, we've got Sun with a pretty good-looking fixture at home to Everton. Sulla with a tough game at home to Arsenal. Isaac up front away to Luton, who is likely going to be my transfer out this week. And the new man, Ollie Watkins, in at home to Sheffield United, who repaid my hit instantly last week, coming away with a nine-pointer. As I already mentioned, Johnston on the bench, currently red-flagged. Saliba is being benched away to Liverpool. Kabore also benched at home to Newcastle. And Woodrow is my dead bench member, currently third on the bench. So, first and foremost, firm, foremost was Al is Alexander Isak. Now, I was holding out hope that we would hear something concrete from Eddie Howe as to what is going on with Alexander Isak. Um, as he was almost certainly going to be asked about it in the EFL Cup match yesterday against Chelsea. And unfortunately, there weren't any words of encouragement from Howe about whether he'll be available for Luton this weekend or not. And unfortunately, with the early deadline being tomorrow morning, uh, Friday morning, New Zealand time, uh, 7.30am, which will be about... Thursday evening over in the UK. We're not actually going to get any more press conferences uh, from Newcastle and Eddie Howe before the deadline this week. So there won't be any additional information coming out from the Newcastle camp. So I have done a little bit of research uh, into a few of the players and I will do my best to say how I think the team will probably line up this weekend. Now, unfortunately with Isaac... We don't know. He is struggling from tightness. Um, Howe's initial comments at the Premier League game last weekend was he was feeling tightness and he did not want to risk him given the intense schedule that Newcastle have been going through and still have lined up in front of them. And so considering that we don't know if Isaac is going to be starting, I have to sell him because there's no way I can just risk... Um, playing him this week there's every chance that he's still injured meaning that Wilson would of course be the main man up front and would be my top choice to bring in this game week but of course if Isaac is indeed fit for the weekend Wilson has played a few games back to back and himself is just coming back from injury and so it is a perfect game to be benching Wilson in um, away to Luton if Isaac is indeed fit and ready and so in selling Isaac I can't even jump across to Wilson because that is kind of tied in with the Isaac injury so I have abandoned a Newcastle replacement altogether and will be bringing in my current front runner front runner <laughs> jeez my words uh, I'll be bringing in my current front runner of Solanke for a one-week punt against Nottingham Forest away. Uh, Bournemouth have been attacking very well. They looked quite dangerous in the, was it the first 55 minutes of that Bournemouth versus Luton uh, match? Um, I'm only looking at Solanke for a one-week play. Uh, he is Notting Nottingham Forest away this week and then followed up with Fulham at home in game week 19. Then he's got a couple of tricky fixtures, Tottenham away and Liverpool at home. So if you are looking to bring Solanke in, I guess you could play him probably away to Tottenham because Tottenham's defence hasn't been extremely sound. And so you could look to play Solanke for the next three game weeks. But ideally, he would just be a two-week play um, if you are looking 
for forward replacements. Now, I don't think too many people will be looking at forward replacements uh, as unless, of course, you're owning Darwin and uh, or Isaac. And maybe there's a few of you with Wilson out there as well. So my one free transfer will be spent on selling Isaac to bring in Solanke. Now, in the Newcastle camp, Fabian Scheer also wasn't in the squad yesterday, uh, meaning that Lascelles will almost certainly start this weekend. And I'm picking that he'll probably start in the middle of the park next to Sven Botman. Now, Botman made an appearance off the bench in the Premier League game last weekend and then in the EFL Cup match yesterday he also played 45 minutes and Eddie Howe was actually asked about him, Kraft and um, Anthony Gordon in the post-match press conference and they were asking why Botman came off after 45 minutes and his comments were Botman and Botman's substitute was planned. 45 minutes was a nice step for him. So as you can see, Eddie Howe is slowly walking, working back Botman back into the team, which is something that I mentioned in the uh, earlier match. I thought he would probably get about a 45 minute appearance the next run out. That has an indeed that has indeed happened. And I think this week we will probably see Botman play a 60 to a 70 minute appearance in the Premier League against Luton um, to work up his match fitness. He will almost certainly be in next to Lascelles with Scheer, Fabian Scheer um, suffering a hamstring injury last weekend. Now, uh, Eddie Howe was also asked about Kraft. And he said he didn't actually see it, but he he thinks he took a knock, uh, which invoked the substitution of Kraft, who was playing centre-back uh, next to Lascelles, uh, but also had been shifted out to right-back with uh, Trippier's suspension last week. Uh, but Dan Byrne is also back in the squad starting, and he played... 80, 80 odd minutes um, in, geez, was it the Premier League match last week or the EFL Cup? He, he got an 80 minute appearance. I think he scored in the Premier League last week. Uh, and he is almost certainly going to come back in and start again this weekend, which I think means that for all of you Livramento owners out there, I think his spot is almost certainly gone. Uh, with Burn back and Trippier having served as one match suspension. So I think the back line at Newcastle this weekend will be Trippier right back, Lascelles and Botman in the centre back roles, and uh, Dan Byrne starting in at left back. Now, I do think Trippier will start, even though the mistakes seem to be mounting for Trippier, but I do not think it is enough for him to be dropped. I very much doubt Eddie Howe will drop him just from a a little bit of a poor run of form. I think he will just get him straight back out onto the pitch and hope that he can just play his way out of the poor run of form. So Trippier looks to be a good shout away to Luton this weekend. And the final comment that he was asked about uh, sorry, player that he was asked about in which he commented on was Anthony Gordon. Now, he also said, well, he kind of, he was asked about whether or not the tackle on Gordon was a red card or not. And Eddie Howe actually said that he didn't see it happen, which is just a very nice way of not uh, commenting on the refs out of turn and ending up with some sort of... Um, uh, some sort of fine or something from the FA. But he did say that the people that he spoke to thought that it was meant to be a red card. Now, irrelevant of the red card, he did say that Anthony Gordon took a really nasty knock too. Now, if he, I don't know how he can say that um, without actually seeing red card events. But it does seem like Anthony Gordon probably won't make the squad either this weekend and without any press conferences upcoming I think you probably 
well unless you've got some coverage on the bench you're probably going to want to look to replace Gordon this weekend so my current front runners for replacements for Anthony Gordon now these were also the players that I was actually looking at to sell Huang He Chan if I found out that Isaac was going to be playing this weekend now obviously Isaac I am selling and so I'm probably going to hold on to He Chan this weekend as I do not know if I'm willing to take a hit for a one-week punt as any of these players that we are looking at would need to repay that hit immediately and I can buy any of these players on wildcard so I think I'm just going to roll the dice with He Chan but if you are owning He Chan uh, or Huang He Chan and don't have anything else to deal with in your squads then these are the players that I would uh, I would be recommending so first of all we'll bring up the fixture ticker now I did mention in the intro that I have been working on the fixture ticker this week over the last couple of days and I've actually implemented an advanced schedule view now it's not complete yet um, what we have got in here is the architecture is laid to put in the external competitions in and around uh, in and around the Premier League games. Now it looks like I might need... How's that looking once I've done that? Uh, my overlay is kind of right gone over. So as you can see, it still needs a little bit of work in terms of layout. So it should look a little bit like that. We'll just minimize me a little bit just for the meantime so that you can actually see the full fixture ticket. So what I've done here is... If I just roll this back a little bit to game week 16, you'll see in here there's a column for the UCL, which is the UEFA Champions League. Uh, group stages match day six is what the title is in here. And you can see teams like Newcastle lost their fixture 2-1 to Milan. They were at home for that match. Man City beat uh, Red Star Belgrade 3-2 away. Um, United lost at home to Bayern and Arsenal drew one all with PSV Eindhoven uh, away so this is just a way to prove that my architecture is working and the fixture ticket will indeed show the these details uh, moving forward uh, but the difference between the UCL Europa uh, FA Cup EFL Cup all, all the different competitions that the Premier League teams are in is that these international fixtures of the Asia Cup and AFCON obviously don't really relate too heavily to the Premier League teams themselves. So I've put the game weeks in so that you can actually see where the game weeks for the Asia Cup and AFCON Cup actually coincide in relation to the Premier League. And I will actually be upgrading it to include some extra information in these columns about the Premier League players that are actually going to be involved in these competitions. So, uh, for instance, Wolves down here has got Huang He Chan who will be off to the Asia Cup and so I'll probably put an indication in here that you know Wolves will be down a player for the Asia Cup. Um, players like, is it, uh, who have we got? We've got uh, Salah and Liverpool will be off to AFCON and so we'll put a little note in the AFCON thing for the uh, number of players that Liverpool will be down while those countries are still in the relevant stages of the competition. So I haven't yet put in the Europa um, fixtures or the EFL Cup or anything like that because I haven't quite had time yet but uh, just to show, give you a bit of an idea of how this is all progressing. So if we just roll this forward to say game week 18, which is the current game week, you'll be able to see that the Asia Cup starts in between game week 20 and game week 21. It's probably a little bit small um, on the YouTube video, but the final column in the header is actually the first kickoff of the first match 
for match day one so that you can kind of see how these all line up. And you can see that all of the match day one, two, and three of both AFCON and the Asia Cup are all completed by the time game week 22 kicks off. You even actually have the round of 16 being played for both AFCON and the Asia Cup in before game week 22. So if any of the key teams like Egypt in AFCON or uh, South Korea in Asia for Sun at Spurs make it through to the round of 16, they will almost certainly miss game week 22, even if they are knocked out of AFCON or the Asia Cup as these games are being played on the 28th and 29th as the first fixtures in the round of 16 and game week 22 does kick off on the 31st. If we just roll forward a little to game week 21, you could see, uh, actually roll forward to 22. Uh, <laughs> yep, and so we've got a bug. That's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, as you can see, this is still in development. This was actually working yesterday, so I've obviously made a change which has broken it as of game week 22. Uh, not ideal. I'll just reload that. Yeah, it's not going to let me, so I'll just stop that and run it up again. And bring the fixture ticker back up. Ah, live demos, eh? They always seem to go a little bit astray. Anyway, that probably gives you enough of an idea about how the fixture ticker is progressing so that um, you can see where we're getting to. Now, I, I, have, I have got plans to release this to the public uh, sometime in future. Obviously, it still needs a little bit more work here and there before we can get it out to the public. But... Uh, I thought that would be a good visual representation of uh, how AFCON and Asia Cup is going to affect the future game weeks in the Premier League. So the current front runners for replacements to Anthony Gordon. Now my top candidate is actually Kulusevski at Spurs playing in the number 10 role. Uh, I think he is a great purchase for the short and long term Spurs run of fixtures from an attacking point of view. I went through in the earlier video. You can see them on screen here. They are six on my fixture ticker for the next eight game weeks. Uh, even if we bring this down to say in the next six game weeks, you'll probably sp see Spurs jump up. Yep, and they're up in... Oh, I can see that even my, um, my order... These columns at the end should all be... Uh, a little bit greyed out as well because I'm only ordering by the first six game weeks. So again, sorry for the bugs in the fixture ticker. But Spurs would be sixth on the fix... Uh, sorry. Fourth on the fixture ticker across the next six game weeks if you are looking for a long-term replacement for someone like Anthony Gordon. Now, I have been talking about Kulisewski on the channel for a little while. I first pointed him out uh, when he went into that number 10 role with Madison's injury and whether or not he plays in the cam role in behind Richarlison or if he's out on the right wing if, for instance, uh, Johnston is not playing out there. Kulisewski has just come alive um, under Postacoglu. Seems to be getting very involved in the attacking play. Lots of time on the ball, lots of threaded through passes, lots of runs in behind the lines, looking to receive the ball in goal scoring opportunities, which is not always being found, but he is in fact making those runs. And he is actually top of my list for replacements for Anthony Gordon. Now, obviously that's a bit of a jump up, so you would need some money in the bank in order to do that. But I think there's probably quite a bit of money floating around the place if you did in fact sell Haaland last week uh, to avoid his injury and his blank this weekend. Second on the list has got to be Jared Bowen from West Ham uh, playing up front. Has a bit of a mixed bag of fixtures in the short term. Manchester United at home this game week I think is actually quite a good fixture for West Ham. 
Manchester United had an atrocious game against Liverpool last week, even though they managed to pull a point away in the goalless draw. Jared Bowen is then away to Arsenal in game week 19, though, and that is a very tough game. At home to Brighton in game week 20 is a pretty good shout for um, a West Ham attacker. And then he's got Sheffield United away and Bournemouth at home in game weeks 21 and 22. Now, I will be looking to jump on Jared Bowen in game week 21 when I sell Salah and Son for the AFCON in an Asia Cup run where they will both be out. I'm picking for at least three game weeks. And so I will be jumping on Jared Bowen at that point for the Sheffield United, Bournemouth at home and Manchester United away fixtures. But in the next run of six game weeks, really it's only that Arsenal game week in that Arsenal game in game week 19 that is really a tough game for Jared Bowen. And then my third front runner is actually Richarlison back at Spurs, midfielder playing up front. He will probably pick up penalties when Sun leaves for the Asia Cup, although I am not entirely certain of that, as I could see maybe Kulusevsky taking some penalties with Sun not on the pitch, uh, especially in the later stages of the match where um, Postacoglu is looking to sub Richarlison off and even playing Kulusevsky up front when, in fact, that happens because of Kulusevsky's strength on the ball and his ability to hold the ball up in the later stages of the match uh, when they are typically trying to see out a victory. Now, my three outsiders for replacements for Anthony Gordon is probably top of the list is Kudos, apart from the fact that he is off to AFCON in game week 21. And so he would be a very short-term move if you are looking to jump on an outsider in the West Ham attack. Next on the list is probably Sterling. However, he's on four yellow cards, is not really impressing, and seems like a very punty play. However, he does have a set of four very nice attacking fixtures in which he could potentially return points. Wolves away, Crystal Palace at home, Luton away, and Fulham at home. It's very good reading for the Chelsea attack. I think Sterling will probably manage to make it through the next two game weeks without picking up a yellow card, as everyone who is on four yellow cards knows that there's only a couple of game weeks left, that they do, in fact, have to dodge those yellows. So you could look at a Sterling punt there. And then third on the list of outsiders is, in fact, Harry Wilson at Bournemouth at only 5.3 million. He got his first 90 minutes against Newcastle last week uh, and is coming up against, is it Burnley? Um, I've written down playing Bournemouth this week. So where is it? Fulham. Oh, jeez. Where's he at? Let's just find him. Why did I write down Bournemouth? Oh, I've written it down for game week 19. That's a mistake. So he's got Burnley at home this week and then Bournemouth. Jeez. Burnley at home and Bournemouth away in game week 19. That should actually read Burnley. So he is probably my third outsider. Uh... These are very outside picks. The three front runners are all more expensive than Anthony Gordon, though, so you will need some money to be able to upgrade Gordon to any of those three candidates. And if you are a little bit stuck for cash, then maybe someone like a Harry Wilson or a very, very outside shout, maybe someone like a Garnacho at Manchester United who looks like the only person capable of scoring a goal at the moment. It is relatively sw slim pickings, and I've put Huang He Chan down as a hard avoid. He is not worth the risk. He is off to the Asia Cup in game week 21, and his performances have been pretty poor. He's a very lazy player on the pitch, is not really putting in the effort to get into goal scoring uh, 
positions and yeah just one that i wish i could turn back time and not bring into my squad so that's it for the list of injuries and potential replacements so the only remaining talking point is in fact the captaincy for game week 18. now i think there are only really two standout candidates for the arm the armband this week that being Ollie Watkins and Hyung Min Sun and I think it's actually a very close call both players are playing at home Watkins has by far the easier fixture playing Sheffield United at home but Sun does come with penalties at home to Everton but the slight down or slight drawback to Sun is that he has moved out to the left hand side of the pitch with Richarlison playing up front which doesn't mean he gets as many chances to shoot and he is usually feeding Richarlison himself who is not really a clinical finisher uh, and so his assist potential has dropped off a little bit um, with the switch in position and of course the fact that he is feeding Richarlison now this one could go right down to the wire but I think I'm going to stick with Ollie Watkins and put the vice captaincy on Sun simply because Everton have been a better defense of late and so I don't think I think Watkins will just get far more opportunities to score in this fixture and that's the short and the sweet of it for captaincy and that is actually it for today's video so if you enjoyed this video and got something out of it press the like button and consider subscribing and if not that's all right too i appreciate you watching and until next time cheers